<laughs> and if you're going to have Marty speak first, he's going to have to unmute. I'm just saying. Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so my beautiful diamond beauties, thank you so much for being here. So when I wrote down in uh, April last year, I want to be a public speaker. That same day, Marty's message on Facebook, his advertisement for Speaker Speak Life came up. I, I messaged him and asked him, can anybody attend? I'm from South Africa and my wish was to be a public speaker. And he said, yes. And I have joined since the first time. And I thought never, never in my life, I will be able to, to say I am a public speaker, but I am an international <laughs> inspirational speaker. And wasn't it for Marty, your vision for the group? I would have never could say that. So thank you so much for all the things that you have done for me and for the group. And I will, uh, like I said to you when I met you, I will continue to follow you everywhere you are going <laughs> because I have learned so much. And meeting you in person, my beautiful Dana taking me on this beautiful road trip to meet you in person was spectacular. So thank you so much. You can, I know you, you will do your speech and have put everything on the Diamond Beauties. So I'm just going to say, take it away, my beautiful Marty. Take it away. <laughs> <You're> welcome. <laughs> So the theme for today, as I saw in your posting, it was all about nature. And I find it a very interesting idea that you chose nature for the theme because my topic is about one of the most naturous things there could possibly be in the world. And that is your voice. And what to do with your voice. I found out this morning that out of the 16 million types of animals that there are, did you know there are only 16 animals that cannot speak? Can anybody guess what they are? Or a small group, unmute yourself. See if you can come up with any animals that do not have a voice, that cannot speak. Go ahead, unmute yourself. This is a speaking opportunity for you. Any ideas? Come on, Dana. I'm sure you know one. The, the ant eater. The ant eater. <laughs> no, that's not on my list. What else you got? Anything else? Um, I can't even think. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a hint. Jellyfish. Goes to the beginning volume and... Snails. Oh, wow. How about that's not an sponges? Animal. Did you know sponges are actually an animal? I didn't even know that oh, when geez. I saw this list. Crabs. Sharks, goldfish, worms, and guess what, Sunit, I didn't hear you say it, butterflies. Oh, wow. Now, see, that's where I think me. they are in error, Come because I, I know at least one butterfly, you, who certainly speak. <laughs> And you do such a great job of it. Go ahead and mute yourselves again. I just wanted to use that little introduction, get some interaction going, because we're going to talk about again, what I feel is the most natural invention there is, and that is your voice. When was the last time, you know, I know you're all into gratitude. When was the last time that you gave yourself gratitude by really feeling your neck and taking a deep breath in? Go ahead and put your, your fingers around your neck and say something when you're muted, you, nobody will hear you. Say something really high and then go real low, as low as you can go and you'll feel your vocal cords change. Isn't that a miracle? That is so nature. For something that is so naturous, if that's even a word, I'm gonna have to look it up. I could use that again if it actually is. <laughs> Why is it that so few humans on the planet embrace the idea of using speaking more than just when we're on the phone with people, more than just one-on-one -on -one with our spouse or significant other, but speaking to the world. Why is it that we really take that for granted as a mechanism to get our message out to the world? Why is it that 
okay, so maybe we want to do that, but it's the last thing on the list that we proactively decide that we're going to go after trying to improve and practice. You've heard the saying practice makes perfect, but that's not the case when it comes to speaking. When you're speaking in public, practice makes possibility. The more you do it, the more possibility opens up for you. So we're going to explore some of those areas today, and I'm gonna give you some examples, but really most importantly, I'm gonna give you three things you can start doing right now. And this applies to you, whether you've been a professional speaker full-time out there on the circuit for the past 25 years, or if you have never given a speech before in your life, these three things will get you on the right track. Now, you probably think, oh, Marty, well, of course it's easy for you. You've been building your businesses for 25 years through speaking. Well, no, <laughs> I have a different story. I am probably the most least likely candidate for wanting to be on stage and sharing my message with other people. In the seventh grade, I was asked to give an oral book report. All we had to do was write on a piece of paper our book report and walk up to the front of the room and read from our piece of paper. That's all we had to do. And I thought, oh, how hard could this be? So the night before I wrote my what I was going to say and I got up in front of the room and my paper was shaking so hard that I couldn't read a word of what was on that paper. But I had to be cool. So I paraphrased what I wrote on the paper and I was terrified. My arms shook, my head was shaking, my body was shaking, my legs were shaking. And I finally got done and I sat down and I said, ha, I never wanna do that ever again. And that's exactly what my goal was and what I accomplished all the way through high school and almost all the way through college. See, I chose to be a marketing major when I went to college. And when we got to the, to the point of the upper level classes, all the classes involved presentations and not just five, 10 minute presentations, but your presentation with your team was the entire class, two hours, sometimes three hours. We also had a written component where along with the presentation, we had to write. So I said, I'll be the writer if you guys do all the speaking. That's how I slid by. But it really came to bite me in the natural behind when I decided to start my business. And it took a while. It took a long time. It took about six years for me to finally get over my fear of speaking and to embrace the idea that I had a true voice that I could use to get my message out to the world. I'm gonna give you three tips that will help you to do the same right now. And I need your help with this because you are actually going to do the very first suggestion. I'm not just gonna talk about it, you're gonna to get to do it. And the first thing is your cell phone. How many of you have a cell phone? Okay, and you have it right next to you? This is like our third arm, right? I mean, we <laughs> carry these everywhere. Well, the very first thing you can do to practice speaking is to speak into your cell phone all by yourself, nobody around. And you can even practice that right now by simply giving a testimonial for this group right here. And what you do is you, you set your phone and then you get to the point where you can do a selfie. Everybody's familiar with your selfies. You hold that phone up. And then what I want you to do is say, Hi, my name is fill in the blank. And if you have a website, say your website and then say one thing that you appreciate about this group. Now, again, you're muted, right? Nobody here is gonna hear you do this. Nobody here in this group is gonna hear you. You're just recording. So your name, your website, if you have one, and then one thing that you appreciate about this group and then sum it up with your name and your website again. That's it, five things, your name, website, one thing about this group that you appreciate, your name and your website, five things. Ready? 
on your mark, you got to turn around to do this because you want the picture in the background, right? Okay, get ready. And make sure to turn on mute. Everybody make sure that you're on mute so that nobody can hear you do this. This is all just you. Okay, ready? Five, four, three, and you should, only, you should be able to do this in about seven or eight seconds, real fast. It's just an exercise. Ready, go. Start wrapping that up. Close it out with your name and your website if you have one. And you're done. Now, the beauty of this exercise is that after you've done this a couple of times, you can go live. You can make a real testimonial for this group and send it in to have it posted or post it on your own social media. And this gets your voice out to the world. You want to really impress somebody? Give them a video testimonial and send that to them. Oh my gosh, you can, you can make connections with people you'd never make connections with because you'd call on the phone and they'd say, who the heck are you? Why should I talk to you? But you send them a video testimonial. Oh, wow, where did that come from? Thank you so much. We need to have a discussion. <laughs> it's amazing how that opens doors for people. So that's one. Practice makes possibility. Practice makes possibility. The more you do that, the more the doors will open. Number two, you have a unique environment right here. You get to know each other. Your next step, the second thing you can do is partner up with just one person, just one person that you've really clicked with in this group and send them a chat and say, hey, you know what? We should practice our speaking together. So once a week, you get onto a Zoom call like this, or even a phone call and just practice speaking back and forth to each other. So what do you think about that? Try to introduce yourself to that person and introduce your business that you're in and then say, what did you think about that? How might I be able to improve that? Practice makes potential. When you're working together one by one, you're going to see the potential. Hey, I'm getting better at this. I'm just talking one-on-one -on -one to a person, but I'm getting some really good feedback here. So you might try going out to a networking event. There are so many networking events online today. You could give your introduction in front of 100 people a couple of times a week. And as you practice that introduction over and over and over again, more opportunities will open up for you. The third way that I wanted to suggest to you is by starting your own group. Speakers Speak Live is a place for professional speakers to come together to do the same thing, to practice their presentation skills and get immediate feedback. But you can start your own group with three people, four people, five friends, colleagues that you, that you work with, people that you, the clients that you have, bring your clients into it and start a practice communication session of your own to meet once a week or even once a month. It's so easy to do and it's free as long as you have the Zoom account. But it's a practice every week, every month that will make you see so much opportunity, so much potential. If you wanna join something even more formalized, did you know there are 16,000 Toastmasters clubs around the world in 149 countries? I looked up South Africa today. There are at least 35 Toastmasters clubs just in South Africa. So easily you could join a club if you're there, but if you're in other parts of the world, Toastmasters clubs are everywhere and they all meet virtually. So you can always just pop in, visit one, see how they work and follow the Toastmasters program. Dana is a member of Toastmasters. I'm a member of Toastmasters. We've both been together in Toastmasters for 20 years almost. <laughs> it's been a long time, but having a structured organization to model into and through with those people is a possibility for you. It's not for everybody, but it's a possibility. I, but I'm just saying, you don't even have to go that far. You could just grab a couple of people from this group and start your own, bring in other friends that you have. And all of a sudden you have a presentation practice group of your own 
and, pres uh, and practice doesn't just make possibility, practice makes profit. When you apply all that practice of speaking to your own business, new opportunities are going to come to you in droves. I mean, you're just talking one-on-one -on -one when you're on the phone with people, you start getting on stages and you don't even have to be a particularly great speaker. Somebody's going to come up to you after and say, wow, that was an amazing message. <laughs> How can we work more closely together? And then you just get better and better and better as time goes on. Well, you've done a great job sticking with me. I can tell, I can see everybody. You're paying attention, you're alert, you're focused. I really appreciate that. This is a very important topic that we just don't hear enough about. You're starting to see, hopefully, the possibility you can have in your own life and business, because this applies well beyond just business, but in relationships too. And you've already taken step one with the phone, right? And I gave you two others, which includes the uh, partnering with a friend, maybe even starting your own group. So you've got three solid ways to practice your speaking for greater possibility. Now, there are three kinds of people in this group. I know that. I know there are some seasoned speakers here that are saying, yeah, Marty, I have kind of half been listening to you. I could do this talk too. I could probably even do it better. Sure. But there's always something you can learn from practice. There's always something you can learn from practice. And then you might be on the other end of the spectrum. You've never given a presentation in your life. You don't even know where to start. Well, I gave you a starting point already. Start with what you have. Work your way into a small group and gain practice along the way. But then there's this group in the middle. The group in the middle that has started, maybe you've had a little experience speaking, but you're not really at that level I'd call professional speaker. You don't even aspire to be that. That's fine. To that group, you have the biggest chance right now of taking a very important step of action. And that is to build the idea of practicing your presentation skills every week. Not just for now or for a month, but for the rest of your life, because there's always room for improvement. Now, if you put your email address into the chat window, I will send you a document that I'm working on that encompasses what I just talked about, because I want people around the world to start building speaking practice groups, like the one I've created at Speakers Speak Live, and I have a method to help you do that. If you have an interest in taking that next step or more details about how to use your phone, like what Dana does every day. Sunit does the same thing. She's on TikTok now. My goodness, talk about a butterfly <laughs> flying, flying off and, and just chasing the dream. I mean, she, she's doing it. She's not just talking about it. She's doing it. There are those kind of people that are willing to take that level of action, and I invite you to do that. I'm going to close out just with one story of another amazing person. I always meet amazing people through this group and amazing people have come to my group on Speakers Speak Live. But this person, her name was Sonia. And Sonia came to my Toastmasters club in desperate, desperate need. She was wanting to move up the corporate ladder at her corporate sales job. And she wanted to learn how to be better at speaking. She said, Marty, what do I have to do? And I said, well, first you have to join the club <laughs> and then we'll get you into this program and you'll go through the process. And I said, you're here. Why don't you introduce yourself to the group? And she said, great, I'll do that. Five minutes before the meeting was to start, five minutes, she went to the bathroom six times. Six, how do you do that in five minutes? I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure you can do that, but she did. And she came back, she introduced herself to the group, and she said, that was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And that was her trauma. When she was in school, you know, I just had a shaking paper. She actually peed right on the floor. So she really had some trauma in her brain. And she worked. She worked. She, it was important enough for her to take that next step that she worked at it. And she became ultimately the vice president of her company, which was a national company. 
And it only took her about six months for that all to transition. That's the opportunity that you have with speaking because practice makes possibility. It's the best time in history to overcome your fear of speaking and your application to your business. The solution is so natural, anybody can do it. You saw the progress just in 10 seconds with your phone, what you can do. You don't have to imagine this anymore, but you do have to commit to hanging around others and making a weekly commitment out of this and start your own practice group. Enjoy the nature of your voice. It's one of the greatest inventions there are in the world. Practice makes possibility. Wow, wow, it's amazing. Let me just unpin you up. I put a pin on you. <laughs> uh, the, so thank you so much, Marty. I love it. There's a few emails that come through, but what I will also do, I will um, send uh, when I post this video on the Diamond Beauty Group, I will also mention it and I will ask them to send you an email for that document you were telling us. Okay, Thank great. you so much. I love your presentation and I love my voice as well. There was one thing that my husband told me or a, a, a few of my family members told me. So Ned, since you lost the weight, your laughter is not, it's not good. Because I think because I, when I had a big stomach, my laughter was, I think, for them, usual. But now if I laugh out of my mouth, out of my uh, stomach, it doesn't sound that good. But you know what? It's my laughter. And I love my laughter. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for that, Marty. I love, love, laughter. You are so welcome to stay. Or you can also go. It's depending on you. There is a few uh, comments and emails already in the chat. At the end, I will just uh, bring everything up and then I will send email that to you if that's okay for you. That sounds just fine, thanks. Oh, uh, wow. And then ladies, if you would like to join Marty on a Wednesday, I will also send you the link for the um, Speaker Speak group on Facebook. And then you, you know, ladies, just joining the group and seeing how they uh, try to help other people with the, not me, other people how to speak, help me actually much more than I know I cannot do that. I must do this. And in the beginning, I was too scared to talk. And now I, you can't stop me from talking. I want to talk the whole time. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Marty. Have a beautiful day. And if you have a video for us to show the ladies in South Africa how it is snowing there at the moment, please, please send it to me. I'm going to put it on the group because, like I said, South Africa doesn't know snowing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what I can do. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Morty. Thank you so much. So the next on our item is, sorry, sorry, are you ready for us? So my beautiful sorry, um, she was one of the ladies, it was my pilot on my diamond beauty um, <laughs> to see how it's working. And, you know, I could see in front of my eyes how sorry I've changed, especially in the first four weeks. So ladies, a special announcement. Uh, because of my six, three years of um, me changing my life on the 6th of April, I'm going to have four hours of, um, of a masterclass of my four, first four weeks of my Manach Butterfly program. I will put out some more details for you. I just need to do this script for this TikTok competition and I must uh, do the video and then I will start with that as well. So sorry, my beautiful sorry. You are welcome to take the floor. Thank you, Sanet. Thank you, everybody. Um, yes, Sanet's Sanet program is really something, 
yeah, it changed my life. It definitely changed my life. And I'm ever so happy. And I cannot thank her enough for helping me getting back on track. Thank you so much, Sanit. Um, my poem tonight is Nature is Everywhere. Nature is everywhere you go. Everything that lives and grows is nature. Animals, big and small. Nature is plants that grow so tall. Nature is beautiful mm -hmm. in every way. Wonderful, exciting, and needs our care. So listen, learn, and do your part to keep nature beautiful forever. And then there's just a small, um, a small one I want to add. Nature is so beautiful. It browses our mind. Time. And that's nature. So I don't know if it was just on your side or was my, oh, my connection was unstable, but I couldn't hear the last part. If you can maybe just repeat the last one, please. Sorry. Nature is so beautiful, it browses our mind. You can lose yourself in it or find yourself at the same time. Oh, wow. That is beautiful. Thank you so much, my beautiful. Sorry. So one of these days, you're going to come, come and inspire us with your story. So I am so excited <laughs> for that. Thank you so much. Sorry. And just before we go thank over to... Thank you. Before we go over to my beautiful Dana that took me on this road trip, I have laughed so much in one week than I have laughed in the last year and a half. It was, it was spectacular. And one place, we, there was a big cross, uh, you know, that was in the far end. And there was two water. They've got beautiful water, uh, ta not tanks, but water. Um, Dana, please help me. What is the word? Uh, water, not tanks, water. Water towers. Water towers. And I said to her, look at those two uh, uh, eating um, aliens looking at the cross. And she said, where are we? I said, there, there. <laughs> it was so funny. We had just a beautiful time. But we're going to get to you now, Dana. I just quickly want to speak to my beautiful niece, Karen. Uh, this weekend, we went to um, touch a truck. I saw this event on, um, on Facebook, and I always, one of my bucket lists is to sit in a fire truck. So not only did I sit inside, in the driver's side, and the other side, as well as in front with a fireman, I went to look for a fireman. But my, my bucket list was stick. And when I, when I uh, met the, the policeman, the first thing I was thinking of my beautiful cousin, Karen. She is so long that she is um, doing what she's doing. And I never said to her, thank you for your service. So Karen, if I can ask you to unmute yourself, just wanted to say thank you so much for this many years that you were a police woman. Um, if you can tell us how long were you, you still are, how long, for how long? Hi everyone, my name is Corin Wollifir at Hi. the moment. Um, I've been in the police now for 31 years. Wow. I'm a real police officer. I put all my stuff here. In South Africa, we don't have badges like in America. We have only ID cards. And I was a detective for very long, working with... Um, rape cases and small children that gets uh, brutally attacked or whatever. At the moment, for the last 10 years, this is part of my job. I make police cards for the police members and I gather information and see that everything is working on par. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Corin. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a quick question. Just yes. a quick question. Yes. yes. Wait, wait, wait. So you've been a police officer for 30 years. You don't look 30. So oh, thank when, you. <laughs> when, when did you join the police force? Good grief, they take you when you're five or something. No, no, I was um, 18 years old when I joined here. 
Whoa. You've got good DNA. Look at some net. I, I, I know. I, I think South good African DNA. Women, <laughs> South African women are beautiful. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> and and, and Dino, her oldest sister is Sarita. It's her, it's also my beautiful cousin. Like <laughs> and yes, yes, and she she um, I, I will not say how old she is, but she is yeah, you know, also not as young, but she looks 22. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, I'm the, the baby. Yeah, she's the baby. She's the baby. So last question. Um, if you think of any other um, work that you would have done, will you still choose to be in the police, Corin? Um, yes, I would. Because um, if I think back on all the women, especially little girls I've helped, they still come back to me. And they're all like my own children for me and to me. So, yes, I enjoy at the moment very much what I'm doing. I'm just working with um, the info and making the police cards and stuff like that. Um, it can get very emotional, draining on you, working with the rape cases and all that. Yes, but I, will, I would not change it, not at all. Wow. Thank you so much. And uh, I've talked to Corin this morning. She will be back <laughs> on the 3rd of July with her 20 minutes. She's, she doesn't know what she's going to talk about, she, but she will still inspire <laughs> us. We are looking so forward to that. Thank you, my two beautiful cousins, for being on here. If I can say something, you might my die, but look, I want to say this. Yeah! <laughs> you might my die. Thank you. Thank you. I love you very much. <laughs> thank you. We love you too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So now, ladies and Marty, we're going to uh, hear about Dana. I love Dana so much. He traveled 2,400 miles to come and fetch me, take me to the Wizard of Oz, my most favorite fairy tale since I was small, took me to go and see the bison. Now, ladies, in South Africa, it's that American buffalo. They look so cross and one licked me it was like ee, but it was wonderful I was on a horse for the first time I could get on easily you can ask Dana she can agree but to get off was not that easy I struggled and but I get when I was standing in front of the horse I said in my, in, inside myself Sunny you are the most blessed person in you that I know and getting on the horse, I said to the horse, thank you for letting me step on you and putting, and thank you that I could start, I, I kept on hitting the horse at the back of my shoe because I couldn't lift it too hard. And I said to her, the horse in Afrikaans, I'm so sorry, I had to, to you know, the, the translation will not be that, but he, he keep on hitting you on your bum because I couldn't lift my leg up higher. But in Afrikaans, the horse understand because you can ask Dana, she keeps on, she want, and then the lady said, no, this horse loves you. So she understands my Afrikaans telling her that, <laughs> thank you for the ride. So Dana, thank you for a spectacular I will go with you anyway. Just tell me we will go and do a trip because I'm, you are I'm already most, packed. I'm the most fun person on a trip. Thank you. And I'm going to give it all to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, I am excited to be here. I am excited to be uh, Sinead's friend and traveling companion. We had such a great time. And one of the things that I really enjoy about being with Sine is she is so natural with her love of everything. Every experience is exuberance. She embraces every single experience. And I think that's one thing that's very important for all of us to think about. Now, I know we're supposed to be talking, I should be talking about nature today, and I am going to talk about nature because I think being out in nature is so very important. And I think we could think for ourselves how we experience 
nature. I'm gonna keep pointing over here because that's my open window in my office and I can see the pine trees moving and the wind and we should have snow, but we never did get snow here in beautiful Cheyenne, Wyoming today, but it is cold. So it's not a lot of fun being out in nature today, but go out in nature. What can being in nature do for each of us? So can everybody get in your chat, don't hit send. Wait till I tell you. We're going to have a delayed chat. So everybody go to your chat and uh, chat out to everybody. Don't hit send. What do you like best about being in nature? Just one little line. I'll give you a couple of seconds and then we're all going to put send at the same time. So hold on a second. Get ready. Everybody typing. Everybody ready? Hit it. What do you like about being in nature? Yeah, oh, freedom. Thank you, Marty. Oh, silence, yes, Karen, yeah. Mm, oh, the grass, yes, yeah. Oh, dancing, yep. Uh-huh, peacefulness, thank you, sorry. Aw, oh, feeds my soul. Oh, Wendy, you rock, yeah. Oh, your hometown, yes, lovely. Lovely, lovely. I, I have to agree with all of those. That is fantastic. I... I'm a big walker. I love to walk. Back in the day when I was as young as Karen, um, I would run. But now I'm way older than that, so now I walk. And <laughs> but I like walking. My husband and I, we live outside of Cheyenne, Wyoming. And most people don't know where Cheyenne, Wyoming is. But they do know where Denver, Colorado is. So if you can pinpoint Denver, Colorado, and then head north. So you have to drive about two, two and a half hours, and then you bump right into Cheyenne. So that's basically where we are when you look on a map. Cheyenne, Wyoming is known for its wind. You can go out when it's cold. You wear a coat, you wear a hat, you wear gloves. That's no problem. But when it's 65 mile an hour winds, which is how fast you normally would drive a car, it's really hard to be outside in nature. So I will tell you, my friends, that wintertime is very, very difficult for me because I miss being outside in nature. In my subdivision, and Sinead has seen it, we have some rolling hills, there are some horses, there are some cows, and in fact, the very American bison the buffalo that Sinead got licked by are only five miles away from our home. And there have been many, many Saturdays or Sundays that I've taken that walk through our subdivision and visited those big woolly brown animals. And you talk about nature, boo, they can be very naturistic. Maybe that's a new word we can use as well as Marty's. <laughs> But it's so much fun. We see hawks, occasionally an eagle. What do I get from being out there? Well, I work at my desk in my office, which I love. I love working with my clients. I love speaking to other people. I also like to go outside. I never put headphones in, two reasons. One, I want to be able to hear a car or a truck so I don't get smashed. Would make it a very bad walk if I ended up getting smashed. But the other reason is, is I like to think. I like the peacefulness. I do a lot of praying. I do a lot of conversations. So if I have a tough conversation I have to have with Sinead, you know, Sinead, this is really not working out. Really, no, it's not how I want to start it. Um, so Nate, I love you so much. It would really be better if that's nah, not how I want to start it. Hey, Sinead, how do you think? Oh, that's a much better way. So when I have a hard conversation, I like to go out in nature and just ponder those things. How can I address that better so that Sinead and I have a better outcome? Now, I can't imagine me and Sinead ever having any kinds of problems that we would have to discuss, but you get my jest. 
Maybe you have a partner, a husband, a spouse, a mother-in-law, or anybody like that, that maybe you have a conversation with. Maybe you want to think about it before you pick the right words. I do that when I go out for my walks. I do a lot of praying. I do a lot of appreciation. We have an animal here that is known nowhere else in the world. It's called a pronghorn. Prong horn. They got pointy prongs, horns on their heads. They are beautiful. It's not an antelope. It's not a gazelle. It's not a goat. It's a pronghorn. And it's the one of a kind. There's no other species like it in the world. It's a pronghorn. So when you have time after this, Google it and, or I might find a picture and show it to you. Um, but they are so beautiful. They're so wonderful. And there is there are so many of them around Wyoming. The, the people from Wyoming uh, call them rats and goats because there's just so many of them. For me, I love it because I get to see my beautiful pronghorn. And when I'm out on my walk in the morning and I get to see at least one pronghorn, I always think that it's God giving me a little nod. It's going to be a great day. That's how I look at the pronghorn. So what's what do you think about when you go out on your walks and you're thinking about the freedom, the peacefulness, this, this, the serenity of it all? What are you looking for? What makes that walk so special? Think about that as you go along. Think about that as you're looking side to side, listening to the birds or the animals. Is that filling your soul? Is that feeling your heart? Being outside, whether you're going for a walk or a hike up a mountain or just sitting on your front porch, drinking some tea and watching your dog or your kids play. That could be so good for not just our bodies, but our mental health for our souls. Be out in nature so that you can connect so that you can reconnect with what's important to you. It is fun to walk with somebody else. I get that. Have a little walking buddy. Hey, I'll meet you. Yeah, you bet. Then you kind of have to go even when you don't want to. It's like, oh yeah, I'm going to be meeting some Nate, so I better be there. I don't feel like it, but she's going to be there. She's saying the same thing. Although with Sinead, she'll be there no matter what. She never feels bad, so she's going to be there. So you better be there. I like walking by myself because then I can get the good thinking and praying and talking in. Take some time for yourself when you go out and get some nature, get some nature inside of you. I wrote this book. I'm just going to plug my book here. Ta-da! It's called Health and Wellness Journey, Finding a Plan, Creating a Plan That Works When All Other Attempts Have Failed. Now, I've always been a little fat girl and I lost a bunch of weight. And the main way is eating right and walking. Walk, walk, walk. And that's me walking in my neighborhood. And I'll tell you something. When I wrote this book, a, a little birdie sort of forced me into it, Marty Dickinson. And uh, he was so helpful in getting things down on paper on what I wanted to say to help you and other people who are struggling with just a healthy lifestyle. It isn't about having a size zero gene. No, it's about being healthy, well, and able. And being out in nature not only helped me because of the exercise, but it helped me mentally. What helps you mentally? What helps you physically? Hopefully, it's something out in nature. It's something outside that you can breathe the air. Be excited about doing it. Be excited about what you're doing in your life. You know when you're on the airplane and the flight attendant always says, in the rare possibility that we'll have air change, pressure change in the cabin, four masks will drop down. Take the mask and put it on yourself and then help others. Do you know why they say that? Because if you don't have your mask on, 
and you don't get your oxygen, you can't help anyone else. You don't put the mask on your kid first, pick your favorite, but you don't put the mask on your kid first, you put it on your first so that you can help. That's the most important part about being well, being healthy, being able. Because if you're well, healthy, and able, then you can help the others in your life. Get out, get into nature, find out what well, makes your motor purr and do it in nature. Wow, I love it. I love what does your motor purr? purr. I must just tell you that guy that was there on Sunday, Saturday with the uniform with the dark unit. Purr. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's natural. That, that, come on, that's nature. <laughs> I just want to unpin you quickly. So, ladies and Marty, is there any questions for Dana? So, what I will also do, I will put a link in. Um, so, Dana, if they want to order your book, I know it's a bit difficult because in South Africa, we actually can't get Amazon. So, oh. I could, um, you could just email me and we can figure out how to exchange the money and then I could ship it off. Yeah, but what I was thinking, if, if there's any of you that really wants Dana's book, we can always do the payment and then send, you can send it to me and then maybe I can bring a copy with, because like I said, it's difficult to get it here in South Africa, yeah. and there in South Africa. So yep. if there's any questions, <clears throat> you're welcome to ask questions. Uh, Dinah is part of the Diamond Beauties and she's just beautiful and to have a, 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 a I want to say a partner in crime but we didn't do anything wrong crimey wise it was just laughter wise we did so yeah. much laughter it was like amazing I remember she gave me a piece of her cheese we went to this what was the cheese place called? Uh, Al the Alma Cheese Factory Alma is the little town of like 600 people and they make the most amazing cheese. So I bought my the, the, uh, yellow cheese and she bought uh, smoked cheese and I, I tasted mine and was delicious. And I was so excited when it was now the next time to taste hers. And I smelled it, it smelled smoky. And when I put it in my mouth, oh my goodness, I'm gonna eat the rest of this because it, it was not that good. But I understand it's because I didn't like the smoking pot. <laughs> But I don't, I don't, I know. Dana, I love you very much, but I will eat this one, but I don't want another one. <laughs> and that was okay because that meant more for me. <laughs> oh, but it was such a beautiful trip. So we can, uh, there's still a few minutes left, but I want to say, Dana, your forever song. Oh, Marty, please, please <laughs> talk. <laughs> I'm going to have to take off for another engagement here. I want to just kind of have a couple minutes between now and then, but I, I just wanted to say how proud I am of you, Sunny. I, you know, I, I spoke here in September when you were just kicking this off, but this, this is, I never expected your communication like you're doing right now. I mean, do you do you remember Dana? The first time, the, the first day, she showed up at Speakers Speak Live was almost a year ago on our very first Speakers Speak Live event, and she said, "I, I don't even know how to write a speech. <laughs> how do I do that? Can some can somebody help me with that?" And look at this. I mean, you're just you're just free forming. I mean, th this is just amazing. The progress you've made. I mean, you've got the perfect the perfect mascot behind you i've got this dog and his name is action he's just running all over the place but you've got this beautiful butterfly and that is you because you are just taking off and i i am just so proud of you your effort it just goes to show that if something is really truly important enough to you that you can do it and anybody can do it i can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next year so uh congratulations you're doing awesome thank you so much marty I almost want to cry, but I heard the other day I'm, I have too many tears so so often, so I try not to. But thank you so much. I really <laughs> appreciate it. Bye, everybody. Thanks for having me. Bye, Morty. <laughs> oh, wow.
How incredible. So ladies, really sorry and quiver, you have joined the Speaker Speak Live. It is spectacular to be with them. It's a, it's a bit daunting, especially if you're from South Africa. And I was there for a long time, the only South African, and I was like, they couldn't understand my accent until my husband said, but the, the, they must learn to, to hear your accent. And since then, I just, in Afrikaans, they know I will translate now. I quit it net. I quit it net. So I just throw it there and you find you find you can hear me, Dana. And you oh, know, yeah. and, and I just want to say that um, you know, with as the speakers speak live group has um evolved and grown and and kind of um made uh changes as you go, you know, it, everything has to kind of um, move along and, and find certain ways of doing things. And I want to say that we've really changed things up uh, so that when we have new, new people on, um, we don't throw them to the wolves. Uh, we're very, very conscious of someone who's new and we don't want to be like for someone like me, who's been speaking for all these years, you know, I want someone to really give me a good, tough evaluation because that's the only way I'm going to improve. Well, for someone new, sometimes a tough evaluation, although it might be true, might be hard to hear. So we're really, really, we've worked very hard at uh, being very sensitive to new people. And we're even changing it up even more. So all the new people are going to go into one room with Marty because he's just a little marshmallowy fluffiness. And so he will, you know, help the new people acclimate into uh, the group because the point of the group is to improve and you can't improve if someone just says that's the best thing I ever heard so uh, so if you've been to the group and you kind of thought nah not for me come on down give it another try and I think you'll like it a lot better it's it's so fun and Sinead has been uh, such an asset to the group so it, come on down and try speakers speak live it's fun <laughs> definitely definitely thank you so much Dana so Dana your forever song we're going to play out with your forever song and if you can tell us why is this your forever song and what it is and why is your forever song this one uh, my forever song was little ha Mary had a little lamb oh that wasn't it huh Sine? No. <laughs> <laughs> I got you good girlfriend you, yeah. did, you, did, you see <laughs> what she's doing ladies we had, She's here going, oh, we had such a ball. I was trying to get your song up. We had such a ball. We laughed so much. Sometimes we were like Chinese. We were la laugh so much that we couldn't see out of our eyes. <laughs> we were laughing a lot. It was a good stuff. So um, the, the song that I, I picked is We Are Family. And I picked that because um, my, my goal in life is to encourage people to use kindness with others. So whether it's the person at the grocery store, the person sitting next to you at work, um, the person sitting across from you at the dinner table, whatever it is, is to try kindness. Because we are, whether we're here in Cheyenne, Wyoming, or all the way in South Africa, we're one big family. And we really need to be looking at each other with love compassion and kindness and that's why i love this song it's just such a great song oh wow thank you so 